Hi guys, my name's Mark Walker and welcome back to Switch Up. Now Sod's Law, you work your ass off creating a list of the best Metroidvania games on Switch that aren't Hollow Knight, then a day later, one of the most critically acclaimed Metroidvania games launches on Switch that isn't Hollow. You get the picture. But let's not be around the bush, Guacamelee may have just turned my head from Hollow Knight for a while. Let's find out why. Super Turbo Championship Edition. The story of Guacamole tells the slightly unfortunate story of Juan, a simple farmer from a small Mexican village, on his way to meet his childhood friend come love interest. This potentially momentous reunion takes a slightly sour turn when he perishes in a most unheroic way. Donning the mask of power though, he returns from the dead to find his love has been snatched up by the evil Calacus, who intends to sacrifice her and unite the world of the living and the dead. Sounds bad. There are moments in many great games where the protagonist stages an exultant return in an expeditious manner, leaving you just pumped for the inevitable retribution run that will see you lay waste to those who dared cross your path. Guacamelee captures this beautifully. The miscreants you will have to bring beneath your heel are both likeable and annoying in just the right quantities to make smiting them a pleasure as the now risen from the dead luchador. Humour proliferates the experience and story is so full of adult and contemporary references that it kept me completely engaged. It is self-referential to a fault at times and sometimes not exactly original, however it has a charisma like no other. For my money the delivery is just near perfect in tone and execution, story scores 18 out of 20. This was one of those games I had never played but had heard so much about. Often you can't help but feel that the hype overshadows the end user experience. Let me say right off the bat, that is not the case here. Controlling Juan, you run Johnny Bravo style through the level in a variety of quirky costumes unlocked by collecting silver coins. When in towns, you can gather a number of side quests from a plethora of bonkers characters that wouldn't be out of place in the Monkey Island universe. These reward you with experience, coins and glory. From luchadors in tight spandex to fighting chickens and some brilliantly crafted villains, everything about the game seems lovingly crafted and the gameplay is at the forefront of the excellent first impressions the game gives. Juan has a number of abilities based around his impressive physique. These are unlocked Metroidvania style by destroying sacred Chuzu statues. Much to the disappointment of your sensei, who has the ability to shapeshift into a goat. Once destroyed, you unlock a permanent character upgrade that will allow you to access new areas and story options. There is a rudimentary teleportation system that allows you to transport quickly from one area to another as long as you've visited it previously. The real meat of Guacamelee comes from the combat system. For those, like myself, new to the games, the uniqueness in combat comes from a grappling system. Pummel your enemies a few times to soften them up and you're presented with an option to grab them with the X button. From here, Juan can suplex slam them or throw them into other enemies in any direction. These abilities can be leveled by visiting one of several shrines dotted throughout the levels, which is where your coins are used. As you learn new moves by destroying shrines, your combat possibilities open up. The trigger can be used to roll, which offers invulnerability and is key to defeating certain enemies. This same move is used to pass some environmental hazards. Combined with some later skills, expect some very tricky puzzle-like platforming sections. Regarding platforming, the majority of these are okay, but later in the game it gets very tricky and I did feel some frustration here, when the core jump, uppercut and grip didn't feel like it worked right. I know it was down to my poor motor skills, but these sections can certainly feel taxing on the patience. Another unique mechanic is the ability to warp between the spirit and the real realm. This changes the world around you, often allowing access to otherwise inaccessible areas. It was a lovely moment when this was incorporated into combat, having to quickly shift between realms to eliminate enemies on the other side is a masterstroke, while still being able to take damage from them means having to put in some serious finger gymnastics to avoid damage. You unlock the ability to enter rage mode if you will and killing enemies particularly using long combos to keep them off the ground will fill this bar faster. When full, you can unleash the energy by clicking the left and right triggers together. You become stronger and faster and at least twice as awesome for a short period. Co-op play with up to four players comes as standard. Simply press A on a controller, choose a character and you're good to go and these characters incidentally can be selected as a single player as well so you can change to many different costumes and looks. Now I couldn't talk my missus into playing here so what you're seeing are the efforts of a sad and lonely Mark. 
unable to control two characters at the same time. <sighs> we can't have it all. Either way, the implementation is solid. The only irritation I had was the massive white buttons that never disappear when you don't want them. It's just an eyesore, isn't it? Could be just me. Either way, full co-op is just one more bonus in an already content-rammed game. Having hammered out a real binge session of Guacamelee, probably 10 hours or so since it launched yesterday, I can totally see why he's been included in the upcoming Smash Bros game, and it makes me much more excited to play as him. Gameplay scores 19 out of 20. Visually, the game looks brilliant, both in motion on the big screen and handheld. It runs like the most buttery of butter, and the environments ooze a confidence that, while totally unlike Hollow Knight, carries the same sense of self. The game knows itself, the world looks wonderful, and the only slight negative is a tiny touch of blurring when in handheld mode, that only a massive nerd like myself would notice. Small details within the world catch the eye, and the 2D animation has a Flash-esque style to it that reminded me of cartoons such as the aforementioned Johnny Bravo. There are moments of Ren and Stimpy in the visual humour, and the whole package comes together outstandingly. Visual score 18 out of 20. Just as with visuals, audio is incredibly important. While the combat sounds just fine, it's the authentic music that is the standout feature here. The soundtrack has gone on to sell incredibly well as a standalone, with upbeat and energetic riffs and an authentic Mexican flavor. It's the work by Ron DePrisco and Peter Chapman that puts the icing on an already delightful game. My only negative here are the one or two, at most, songs on the playlist that can be a little overbearing and repetitive, but the majority are pure class. Audio scores 18 out of 20. The game costs £11, and I purchased the game the second I saw it hit the store. Having seen so much about it and heard good things, I was in the market for something to really sink my teeth into that I knew I would hopefully enjoy. Now, I wasn't disappointed. The game is actually also on sale in the US for $13.49. You should buy this now. If you haven't played it, buy it. I have only ever said it that unequivocally about one other game, and yep, you guessed it, it was Hollow Knight. There is content galore, and the option to play with up to four of your friends just tops it off. While not quite as long an experience as Hollow Knight, it has so much going for it. Value scores 18 out of 20. I feel I've said what I need to say. Guacamelee is a must buy. It scores a final switch up score of 91%. I gotta go and play it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment, like, tell your gran, and most of all, keep it switch up. See ya!